This morning we're going to start out our service with a testimony video, so turn your eyes to the screens. You can be seated. My name is Jeff Peterson. I've been attending Word of Life Church for about eight, nine years. And a few weeks ago, a pastor had given a, a delivery to the congregation at the end of the service and asked if, uh, if anyone had... Uh, uh, knee problems and that God was uh, going to touch knee uh, knees and I've been having knee problems for a little while. God uh, touched me uh, as soon as pastor said that. Um, pastor said you didn't have to you don't have to stand up you don't have to do anything but just sit there and receive and so I did and um, from that time on, I can uh, walk stairs now pain-free, and I remember the scripture that God is our healer, Jehovah Rophe, and I'm uh, touched by God, and God has healed me, so I praise God for it. Glory to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Good morning, everybody. I'm Lauren Hershey. I'm the lead pastor of the church. Uh, this is Pastor Kelly Lucas, our children's pastor and the director of our group's ministry. This is our assistant pastor, Mike Lopez, our youth pastor. And uh, so glad to be sharing the, sharing the bump out with them today, as we affectionately call this thing. Hallelujah. Welcome. This morning, we're going to do some things a little bit differently, apparently, and uh, share with you Psalm 107. Uh, says that, oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness, for his wonderful works to the children of men. We want to take some time this morning and celebrate the good things that God has been doing in the church this year. God's been doing awesome things. God done anything for you this year. Hallelujah. Wonderful. We're going to share. We welcome all those that are with us on Facebook Live. We're so glad that, that we all could be together this morning. As we get ready to start to share some of these wonderful testimonies, why don't you find three or four people around you there? Shake their hand, hug their neck, welcome them to church. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Let them know that you're glad they braved the elements to get out here today. Praise the Lord Jesus. Glad you guys made it this morning. Glory to God. Hallelujah. As we get ready to, as we share these things this morning, out of Psalm 107, there's four, there's four groups of people that have been blessed by God and dealt with in areas of their life and helped. We want to touch on some of those this morning. As we come to our end of our sharing this morning, we're going to invite anybody that wants ministry, anybody that wants to partake of these wonderful goodness things of God to, uh, uh, we are come down to the floor and Pastor Joy is going to join us. We're going to pray for you guys, anything that you want. And here's, here's uh, what was stirred in my heart this morning is there's an open heaven here with us today. That everything that God has for you, Second Peter chapter one said He's given you everything, everything pertaining to life and godliness through the knowledge of Him. So to keep you alive and well, to help you into the things of Jesus and to walk with the Lord, uh, He's got it for you today. Oh, hallelujah! And I'm going to tell you this right now. He is. I want you to start. I want you to think right now of the the best thing, the the highest thing that you think that God could take you to. Got that? All right. Realize in Ephesians, God said he is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ask or think. Above that, beyond that, that's the floor, not the ceiling. That's, he wants to take you further and higher and more pure, more holy, more healthy, more whole than, than you could ever imagine or think. And so here's why we're sharing these things this morning, to glorify God. But notice verse 43. He says, those who are wise, so this is our hope. Those who are wise will take all this to heart. They will see in our history the faithful love of the Lord. And here, that's what we want you to see this morning. We want to glorify God and draw your heart, draw our hearts to that place where we're resting in the Lord and receiving from God and glorifying Him. Can you say Amen. Hallelujah. You glad you came to church today? Good. We're so glad that you're here with us. Kelly, why don't you start out this morning? Sure. Share something with us. 
Sure, I'd be happy to. Um, in our women's ministry this year, we have seen great growth, and not just in women who have been coming out and, and participating in our events, um, but in the women growing and who they are in the Lord. We started off the year with an incredible uh, bang, if you will, um, for our conference. It was a tremendous time. We had uh, Pastor Sarah Bowling here with us, Pastor Joy shared. Uh, we had some workshops, all kinds of fun things, and we've had uh, some pop up events, paint parties, just a lot of different things going on throughout the year that have been opportunities for us as women to get together, hang out, and to grow, and to grow in our relationship with one another, and most importantly, in our relationship with the Lord. So we've just seen great fruitfulness from Praise that. Praise the Lord. Have you grown any yourself? I have. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't ask her that because I thought she needed to ask her that because in the first service she shared that. I thought it was cool. You know, let me add this because uh, I want to put my strength as the senior pastor behind this event. You know, when we think about, we think about, uh, and I'll talk to you about, think steps, not events. We have great events around here at the church, and but don't think of those events as just you know, one and done things, like a like one pearl laying on the counter. No, a pearl is beautiful when it's in a whole string of things. And all these things that we do, they're a step. They're, they're something that we have in place to help you in the, your journey with the Lord. And we've got a great ladies' event coming up on the 18th and 19th, the Win Priceless Winter Women's Conference. It's always a mouthful for me to try to say that. The Priceless Winter Women's Conference, because all, all you ladies are priceless. And uh, so it's coming up the 18th and 19th. Now listen, this, this conference is a big deal, and God wants it to be a big deal. I don't want you ladies, and God doesn't want you ladies to have to go to St. Louis or to Chicago to have some great, wonderful, powerful conference that ministers to your hearts. He, God wants you to have a wonderful conference right here in Dubuque. And so this thing is growing. So I want to get behind it. Guys, let's get behind this thing. Let's get our ladies out here. Ladies, get registered and get here. It's going to be awesome. Your speaker this year is Drenda Cassie, who is a powerhouse of a, of a minister, a woman of God. You're going to be so blessed. So come on out the 18th and 19th. God is doing awesome things. And it wasn't only Pastor Kelly that grew this year. It was all of our ladies. Come on, that was a joke. We did. We did. All right. Glory to God. Mike, you've been sitting here for a few minutes quiet. I have been. I have been. Um, the, you know what? The first one I want to share is, is with God moving in the youth group. Um, I've got the privilege, uh, my wife and Amanda were the youth pastors here. And it's been, an, God's been stirring on me some months back that the direction this year, we need to do this all the time, by the way, but the direction uh, particular this year for the youth, for the teens, was that we were going to uh, give outreach opportunities for them for them to put their hands to the plow, so to say, put their hands to work um, from what they're learning, from what they've uh, seen from their parents or pastors, or they, they read in the Bible, right? That we need to be doing something outside these walls and praying for people and speaking to people and helping people out. And, um, and that's what this year was about. It was about giving opportunity for that, for them to put it into practice for themselves. And it's been kind of funny because uh, God stirred that for the group this year. And I was like, okay, that's cool. But then he was like, well, you're going to go on a missions trip since you're leading it. You might as well go somewhere and pave the way. I was like, okay. And so I'm going on a missions trip this year. But it was, it's, what's really been cool is that God has already been stirring in the teens' hearts before we step into 2018. He doesn't kind of wait for time. It's kind of, God's funny that way. And, and, and I've been getting testimonies back of just small practical things to where one of our teens uh, rides a city bus. And, and he was just feeling on the inside God was leading him to give his winter coat away to a stranger. And of course, probably like I would, you know, you're like, Lord, did I hear you right? Because I'm really hungry. I might have just missed. And he was like, no, God was leading me to give my coat away, he said. And he did. He gave his winter coat Glory. away to a stranger. Well, and another to second God. testimony comes in. And uh, a young man just went around to the neighbors where he lives next to and shoveled their driveway, just something practical, uh, the love of God in a practical way, and in, in the snow with the shovel, writes a little statement like, God, God loves you. So he shovels it, does the thing, and then sneaks away. And he did it for like six houses. Well, he got a, a, a letter back, a note back from one of the neighbors that was like, I think you're the one that shoveled my driveway and wrote, God loves you in my lawn. And 
I just want to thank you for it and say God loves you too and stuff. And so it's just really cool the direction we're headed this year. God's taken yeah. uh, the, the youth, not to look down on your age. They can step out on their, uh, no matter what age we're at. We're not too young. We're not too old. And uh, God's already stirring and moving in, uh, in, in life's ahead of time. So it's cool. I may have glad that, how many of you are born again this morning? How many of you are glad to hear that God is moving in the teenagers? Yeah. And adjust in their heart. Can we just lift our voice? You know, the scripture Lord. says, so let us, let us praise the Lord for his goodness. Lord. Matter of fact, why don't y'all just stand up right where you are. And let's, let's thank God right now for moving among the teenagers in this church. Hallelujah. Lord, we praise you and thank you for your goodness. Glory be to God. Thank you. Come on, saints. Lift your voice and let's praise him. Hallelujah. Lord, we love you. We thank you for your goodness. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Now, let me have your attention for a minute, because just like with Jeff, the, Jeff's testimony this morning, as we were in praise and worship this morning, glory to God, I need to deliver a word to somebody, but I know who it is, hallelujah, but, it, but, it's, but even now the Holy Spirit bears witness with my heart and tells me that it's more than one person. You have a child that has some mental challenges. Just They show up in disciplinary things. They show up in, in, in the ability to process some things, and and and... It brings challenges into your family. The Lord wants you to know you're going to have a breakthrough in the area this year. The peace is going to come. There's a breakthrough happening right now. Just as sure as I'm standing here, you're going to see it. I had to wrestle with myself about whether I'm going to deliver this word or not because I'm out on the line, but I'm telling you, shalom, the peace of God is coming into your home. There's a breakthrough right now, whether you're going to be able to handle it. There's going to be a, a breakthrough in the way your child, your child processes information, your relationships in the home, the whole peace in the home, the whole dynamic of relationship in your home is changing. And it's going to be wholeness. And it's going to be permanent. Hallelujah. It's not going to come and then slip back and get away from you. God is doing a miracle in her mind right now. Hallelujah. Lord, can we lift our voices and receive that and thank God for it? And just as sure as Jeff got his healing, you're going to see this thing happen. Lord, we love you. Glory to God. Now, let's lift our hands to God. Jeremiah the prophet said, let us lift up our heart with our hands to God in the heavens. Let's do the word. Let's give him that sacrifice of praise. Lord, we love you. We reverence you. We receive it, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Woo, thank you. All the angels of God are out at work, are out at work. Oh, glory to God. Now, hallelujah. Glory to God. David and Tammy, can I lay hands on you? Come on up here. Now, those of you uh, that resonated in your heart, I want you to step out right now and come down here and let us pray for you. Hallelujah. Come on. Right now, if that resonated in your heart, step out and come down here right now. Don't waste any time. Joy, come here. Hallelujah, Jesus. The anointing of God is all over me. Father, I thank you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth for a miracle in this household. Thank you, Lord. We thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You do the heavy lifting, so we thank you, Lord. We count it done. In Jesus' name, every grace, every thought, everything they need to walk through this change. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. And to be at peace in it and realize it is real. <laughs> it is true. It is you. And we thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Father, I thank you right now for a miracle. Right now, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Thank you for change, Father. Change, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Why don't you lift your hand off of her, Tammy, if you would. Thank you, Father. Just agree with us. Father, in the, in the name of Jesus. Now, I think let's do it this way. Father, thank you. Right now. <laughs> Woo! Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. You got to change. Change. Hallelujah. Now, a key for you, just be glad. Just don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. You know, it's one thing the enemy would use against you. Is It's so big. It, it's such a big deal. Not for God. Not for God. Hallelujah. Don't give that thought a place. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for a change. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm laughing not because your situation wasn't serious, but because we got the victory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for a change. Thank you, Lord, for a change. Hallelujah. Thank you for, Father. Oh, 
my goodness, the blessing of Abraham along at last. <laughs> oh, glory to God. Yes. <laughs> oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for a miracle breakthrough in the name. Yep, yep, yep. Yep, 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 yep. I don't care what the psychiatrist or psychologist called it. I don't care what kind of handle, Father. It makes no difference what they, terminology they put on it. We, it's gone. It's broken by your anointing and glory. And we thank you for it, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for completing the work, the completion of the work that you've begun today. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah! Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Whose turn is it? Hallelujah. Isn't the Lord wonderful? Why don't you just give your neighbor a high five or a hug or a handshake or bless them or celebrate the goodness of God right there where you're at. Come on, stand up, will you? I'm more excited than you are. Help me. Help me, help me. <laughs> help me praise him. Glory. Oh, oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness. His, his wonderful love and gifts to the good children of men. Oh, thank you, Lord. Glory to God. All right. You can be seated. That's so good. I love how God works. Love it. Um, speaking of him working, we have a lot of business leaders in our communities, uh, in the surrounding area here in our church. How exciting is that? That, you know, that's one of our core values, like the, the entrepreneurial, that instinct of like growing and, and wanting to always be better and improve. And I love that we have people in our church who are already doing that and we can learn from and we can grow from. Um, so I wanted to share that throughout the year, they, uh, there's been lots of new accounts that there was no possibility and brand new accounts have been added to some of our business leaders. Um, new jobs for some of us who are just looking for a job that we've, the door's been opened for that. Um, record weeks of business. How awesome is that? That God is blessing us as we serve him. Promotions filled, increase is happening. So God's working and whether we're a business leader or not, we're all leaders. And so God's working in our life as we serve him and as we're planted in the house. So wonderful. Thanks, Kelly. Man, it's so good. I mean, it's all year long, both in the services and, and in the office, uh, as Lord, the Lord has spoken words and, and brought stuff to people. And, you know, as people came, even newcomers, I remember what, just uh, the glory to God. I just... Go ahead, Mike. I'm falling all over myself. Uh, <laughs> I just, let me try to get this out. Just, just for instance, <laughs> Christmas. Someone came from 60 miles, found the church on the Internet, looking for a traditional Christmas story service on, Chris, on Christmas Eve. Came from 60 miles away, and we're so blessed. And, and guys, it's not just, it's not just Pastor Lauren. I mean, they were blessed when they came on the parking lot with the, keller, the carolers in, in the lobby, all you dream teamers that are ministered to them before they ever got in here for the service. And then the music, and, 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 and way, to go, way to go, church. Man, and, they, and uh, you know, I mean, these are Baptist folks, but uh, they came in, and, and on the way out, you know, the guy looked at me and, and said, you know, good work, good work this morning. And I don't know, that's kind of guy speak for, you know, just that for, you know, God really, you know, they drove 60 miles. And not only that, but brought her mother. Her mother goes to a church in town and she skipped her service to come out here and be with them. And God met him right here. And man, God's, God's meeting people. Yeah, let's praise the Lord for that. God's just touching people. You know, people are are walking out and saying, you know, good word or just what I needed or different things like that. So, and it's, it's not, it's not Pastor Warren. It's the anointing. It's, it's Jesus. It's Jesus. Connect them with your lives and with real people's lives. They're, they're real points of need. So thank you, church, and thank you, Lord. Go ahead, Mike. You got a great testimony. Yeah, there. my next one, you know, it just really strikes home with me. This one's, this one's a testimony from a family with their tithes and finances. 
And, you know, we've all been there before, just, just depending on where, <laughs> where we're at at the time. You've got, you've got the ones who are like, what is this tie thing? Does it really work? Is it, is it this or is it that? You know, wh what's it all about? Then, then you've got us that we believe that it works. We've seen it work. We know it works. And, and, you know, sometimes you just get in those years where it's like, okay, I'm a tither, but at the end of the year, if I made 30000 then why does my number look a little lower than what it should if I was really given a tenth? If we really were honest, we've all been, have, have been there before, right? Where we're like, what happened? And then he reminds you, well, you went on vacation. Remember that one time? Did you, did you catch up on that week you missed? Well, no. Then, then you know, all these little side jobs, whatever the case might be. And what really strikes on this one was, was the family had made a decision in the beginning of the year. They're like, we're going to make a point that we're not going to come in under the tenth this year. We're going to make a point that, that we're going to pay the tithe off the top, no matter any bills, no matter any whatever would come in, the tenth, the tithe was first to them, which is really God is first in their life. That's what they're making a point, decision point at the beginning of this year. And, and you know, it, it's, it's the usual story. It's, it's the same for all of us. We've got our ups. We've got our downs through the year because it's life, isn't it? But they, what, it really stood out that they had made a point to go all in. They've had the ups and downs, but through the year and through the ups and downs, they learned the true being a cheerful giver. They saw that even with the ups and downs, the ups began to, uh, began to be more often. They saw an increase in their sales. They saw an increase in the paycheck. They saw an increase in their checking account. But what, what really came here, this is the big thing that, that we all would have to face at this time. It says, then something curious happened. Isn't that what it is? It, it was like overnight, the faucet of provision that we were living under stopped. It was like it shut off. They came to a decision point in this year when it was like they said, I'm all in. God, you're first. And things were looking good. But then that, that the devil would like to try to test you, doesn't he? And it seemed like things shut off. That to the point that I don't think we can tithe the next couple paychecks. But they made a decision right then and there. They said, no, we're going to stay faithful and we're going to tithe first like we had. We're not going to have gone all this way and then shut it off now. We're going to push through. And what's really cool, it says, at the, great, at the time of our greatest financial need, God brought us our greatest financial breakthrough. Overnight, our financial situation changed dramatically. When they came to the point where they're like, we're not going to stop now. We've come too far. We're not going to give up on you, Lord, and not trust you because we've already seen your goodness and your blessing and your hand of protection upon us all year long. This little glitch is not going to make us stop believing you. We're going to push through it and just believe that your word is true. And I tell you what, when they made that decision, what was really awesome is that overnight things changed. That they came, they, had, they went into the year with a, a certain number that they've, you know, we're going to, this is what we're going to see giving this year. And they came in over and above like 150% above what their Glory projected thought God. number would be. Yes. Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Man, that's awesome. Glory. Your turn. Yeah. Well, before we do that, Let's all lift our voices all right. and give the Lord praise. Come on, how many of you could use a breakthrough in your finances? Glory to God. Or if Sam, have you have seen a breakthrough in your finances? Look, come on, you've been sitting long enough. Let's all stand up, give the Lord some praise. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness, for his wonderful works to the children of men. Oh, glory to you, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I was just realizing this morning, oh, we the Lord brought us into a new home this year. I mean, wonderful provision that the Lord is doing. Can I get an amen? He's so good, isn't he? Give your neighbor a high five and tell him the Lord is so good. And you can sit down. Hallelujah. Kelly? Yeah, I shared with the first service, and I'd love to share with you, that when Pastor Mike was sharing that testimony, it reminded me of um, the month of March was really hard for my family and I. My husband had surgery, and... 
for whatever reason, it was just a really hard month, hard financially for us. And I had been learning and studying about the goodness of God and help me out here. But have you ever been in your car or in your home and you're like, yeah, God, you say you're good, but really? I mean, you're just in it. You're in the the faucet turned off. You're frustrated. And I tell you what, that day, I opened the mail up, got the mail, opened it up, and there was a card. There was no a return address, no nothing. I had no idea who it was from. So if it was from one of you, thank you. But it was a gift card that was for groceries for us or gas or whatever we needed to use it for. And on it, it said, and I laughed and cried because it said, God is good. The day I was hollering at him saying, Oh, you know, because my faucet felt like it had turned off. It was frustrating. But I want to say that because that was, how many months ago was that? Like nine months ago? I forgot until this morning. So I encourage first service, I encourage you, write it down. Write down the things God's doing so you can go back and look. Oh, hey, on February 2nd, God did this or that. And even if it's small, you know, the Israelites, they made altars and they, uh, they built things to remember I mean, we have how many artifacts and things just in a worldly type way, uh, natural artifacts and stuff that remind us of something. So remind yourself of what God has done and the goodness in your life so you don't get to the end of the year going, oh, yeah, I remember that, you know, and you don't thank him along the way. So a little side nugget there. Um, in vitality and E2, does anybody remember the E2, our evangelize and establish? It was a main priority for us as a church this year to evangelize to others, to share God's goodness and his love with others, as well as uh, inviting people and bringing them in. And so wanted to share that I received, as well as somebody recently wrote on a connection card, that they had been invited two years ago by someone. Two years ago. And they started coming. And God's been working in their life, and they've been finding joy in their life, and things have been changing. How beautiful is that? I got an email from when Pastor Adam used to work here two years ago. I mean, there was the time stamp and everything from from a family that said, hey, we've gone through a rough season, but we want to come back to church. And my heart said, well, I wish you would have been here. We could have walked with you. But they're coming, and they're so excited to be here because someone invited them. Someone put that out there. So praise the yeah. Lord this year, this year, over a hundred people have made decisions and accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Can we give, give God thanks in the jail and the service and the teens? Hallelujah. Let's lift our voices and thank God. hundred new believers in the body of Christ through the church. Hallelujah. Lord, we love you. We thank you for these people. We lift them up to you. We thank you for receiving them and strengthening them. Thank you. you got a plan for them, and you're walking them in that plan. Lord, you're so good, so good. Hallelujah. Amen. And including you guys, you guys that are believers. Man, he's walking you in his plan for your life. Glory to God. Just after the service, the first service this morning, a guy was telling me, you know, as far back, he really appreciated the service, and he said, as far back in my life as I can look, as many generations back as I can look, we're, we've been all God-fearing people as far back as I can see. But there's some people in the congregation that are brand-new believers. They're first-generation believers. So some of you in here this morning, you're the first ones to believe in your family. But you stay faithful, man. You stay faithful, lady. You stay faithful, brother, sister, because should Jesus not come back for a while, there's going to be generations to come. Somebody down the line is going to be able to look, look back and say, you know, far back as I can look, we've been believers. We've been walking in the blessing of God and seeing his touch on our life. And it started with you. So thank you for getting hooked up and being faithful. What's been happening in your group, Kelly? Uh, in our groups, we, we've had great things happening. <laughs> um, we have a group, uh, our group, the Authentically You group, we are a group of ladies who get together for coffee and lunch and to just talk and do life together. And from the very first day that we started, when we started wow. a year, about a year ago, we have had women who have just, I mean, coming completely open. And it's beautiful because as women, that's hard, or I find that it's hard sometimes, is to be to be vulnerable and open and share things in your life that you're struggling with. But we have, um, we had a, a week 
probably a month or so ago where there were two women who were at the table. One of them was sharing just about how she, her life had been touched in some services. God had been speaking to her and coming to the group. She's been taking a stand and reading her Bible and anxiety was a big thing for her, fear. We know that's rooted right in fear and God can heal us and, and bring us um, freedom in that. But she's there and she's just sharing how God has been working with her. And she had times that she just, in the name of Jesus, devil, get away from me. I mean, just the realness of it. She's in her home. She's struggling. And she just told him to get out. Like you have no place, you know, ain't nobody got time for that. I don't have time to be anxious in my head. I don't have time to be anxious in my heart. And so she was sharing this at the group and we're all encouraged. Well, there's another lady who was sitting next to me who then after she shared said, I deal with that too. Like she just, she was kind of flabbergasted that this woman was sharing and, and I think you were just talking to me. And so we were able to pray with her right there in the coffee shop. We laid hands and we prayed and we spoke and we stood and we told her, we're, you're, you're not alone. We're with you. We've got our arms linked together. We've got your back. We're praying for you. We love you. We support you. And so the connection that's been happening uh, all across the board, there's been families that have been growing from our with uh, kids group that we had. Um, we've had fun playing pickleball, all kinds of wonderful connection. Um, and it's just, Pastor, it's just one of the ways that we can grow in our walk with the Lord. You know, it's a, it's a vehicle. It's a tool that we have to, to grow and connect with God and with others. Yes, God. So, so anything good can come from connect groups? Totally. So get in a group. We have a launch. There are a few groups going. Um, get out there and check Praise it out. Yeah. Mike, can anything good come from a coffee shop? Oh, a lot of things good can come from a coffee shop. I was going to do a different one. You're sending me back to the coffee shop one. <laughs> I do have a coffee shop one. You guys would be surprised with that. Um, no, I had a father call up uh, this year just a couple months back. And it was uh, this one. This one's kind of, I, I would title it Peace in the Home. Uh, we've, we, we can all relate to that at different times in our lives. And, and this father called up. He was from Independence. Didn't even come to this church, him or his family. And, uh, but he had heard about us and for whatever reason called up and, and wanted me to meet uh, with his, uh, his uh, college-aged teenager is what it was and so of course I, I I met with him at a coffee shop because that's where all good things happen is with coffee and uh and so I sat with the teen for about an hour and a half two hours or whatever it was and, and just spoke with him and heard from him and uh just just talked back and forth and um I got a got a call a couple weeks back a couple months had gone by hadn't heard nothing you know sometimes you just never know it's like some you'll pray for someone or you'll sit with someone and then you never hear back again it's like Lord, I trust something good came out of <laughs> that hour and a half. Uh, but he phone called back just recently, and, he's, and, he, and he said, I just want to thank you. Uh, and it wasn't me. It's God at work in, in the teen's life. But he just wanted to thank, uh, say thanks. He said, walls have come down. Communications open back up. There's, there's a peace in the home that wasn't there before. And I was just like, praise God. You know, just, just something practical like that, just to have God in that home. There's that peace and that love and, and joy to come back again. That wasn't there. And so what a testimony it was. Praise God. You're, thank God for that. Amen. And I want you to know your investment in what's going on around the church, your offerings and those things make this kind of thing possible. And I'm going to go back to what Kelly was saying about the group because we have a group launch, new group, connect group launch this morning. There's some things that happen through connection through the fellowship, through that connection with other people. And that's why we have connect groups. People, you can be, we can support one another. We can love one another. We can be there for each other. We can help each other grow through those relationships. Now, for some of you in the church, some of you that are serving in the church in particular groups, your schedule, like with the praise and worship team and some others, the, your service, your dream team, the team that you serve the Lord with here at the church, that's going to be your smaller group. That's going to be your connect group where you find that you, you do life together. You find that fellowship with each other. But for some of the others of us, it's those connect groups, you know, whether it's the getting over the alcoholics or it's alcoholism or it's, it's learning how to deal with your kids and, and knowing that you're not crazy and other people going through things too. And, and just finding that support, that fellowship. I really want to encourage you, church, get, it, get connected. Get, get, get connected with that smaller group of people. Find out those groups. If you get involved in a group, you know, and you find out, well, I don't even like this group. Well, it's not forever. 
You know, and it's not fatal. And, and how many of you know in life it's nice to have at least one decision made, and if you find out, well, that's not my thing, well, at least you know. Isn't that right? You may hate pickleball, but on the other hand, you may love it. You may go pro. Who knows? So get involved in those connect groups. Isn't the Lord good? What he's doing in our lives. Thanks, guys. I'm going to go ahead and go over to Psalm 107. So uh, grab your Bibles, will you? In Psalm 107, there's four groups of people that, that, got, that cried out to the Lord. I think it's significant. Uh, one guy was sharing with me after the first service, with something I hadn't pointed out. He said as we were going through these scriptures, he realized a lot of these situations, these people were in a mess because of their own choices. And even then, God, God helped them. When they cried out unto him, when they cried out, say it with me, when I cried to the Lord, he helped me. Any believers found that to be true? All we got to do is cry out to him. That first group we read about in verse 4 and 5, it says they were wandering in the wilderness, lost and homeless with nothing to eat. And when they cried out to the Lord, he delivered them, cried out to the Lord. He rescued them from the distress. Listen, we can praise the Lord. How about this, church? Can we praise the Lord as our provider? Yeah, we can praise Him as our provider. He satisfies our hunger and thirst, both our spiritual thirst and our natural thirst. Isn't that right? And then, isn't that right? I mean, how about it, church? There may be somebody right beside you, or somebody down the road for you, from you, or somebody listening on Facebook right now that needs to hear your testimony, believer. That God is so. So, can they trust God as their provider? Yeah, they sure can. We found him to be faithful, haven't we? Glory to God. Secondly, those in this verse 10 and verse 14, it says those who were in emotional or physical bondage, imprisoned in iron chains of misery. But when they called on the Lord, verse 14 says, he led them from the darkness and deepest gloom. He snapped their chains. Woo, glory to God. He's a chain breaker. He's a difference maker, isn't he? Hallelujah, delivering us and giving us hope and help and taking us forward. You know, this holiday season that we're just coming through is one of the times. It's a great joy and gladness, all the twinkling lights and and gifts and parties. But at the same time, it's also one of the most depressing times of year for a lot of people. But I want you to know if you'll cry unto the Lord. And I'm telling you this because of the testimonies of the people in this room as well as the Word of God. If you'll cry unto the Lord in the midst of that darkness, He will turn the light on and He'll bring you out. He'll leave the, he's left the light on for you, friends. And if you just call unto the, His name, He will bring you out. Thirdly, is, for, is the third group, they were so physically sick and diseased that they could not eat. Now, that doesn't mean they couldn't eat because they had eaten all the cookies and all the fudge and all the baklava, and they didn't want any more. No, they were so sick and diseased that they could not eat. And yet, when they cried unto the Lord, it says in verse 20, He sent His word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. He spoke, and they were set free. Just like He spoke, and Jeff was set free. He spoke this morning, and and He's been speaking here in the church. Knees and heels and, and, and stomachs and, and all kinds of things. He's been speaking. And you know what? He sent his word, the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says in John 10 or John chapter 1 is that, that the word of God became a human being and came and lived among us. God sent his word to do what? To heal us and deliver us from our destructions. In 1 Peter 2.24, we read that by his stripes, by the wounds that cut into the back of the Lord Jesus Christ as he was getting crucified and redeeming us, by his stripes, healing was purchased for you. And you can, if you came in this place this morning, bent over and bound and sick and hurting, man, you can let that stuff go because the price for your deliverance has been paid. Oh, glory to God, just let that sickness go. Realize it doesn't belong to you anymore because God has set you free. And the fourth group is that last group in verse 23 through 27. They were on the sea of life 
and they were confused by hopeless circumstances. They were out on the sea, it says, and the waves came and the winds blew. Any of you ever been out on the sea of life? People are out on the sea and stuff comes and winds, contrary things come up and you think it's going to go one way. Man, I had, I'll just tell you, I had great tickets bought. I had, we got to go to South Carolina to be with our daughter at Christmas time. We were flying out on Christmas Eve, Sunday afternoon. We were going to leave at 440 from right here in town and be in Greenville by 945 that night. Woo, glory to God. Finally, at 3 o'clock Easter morning, we were pulling into their house. Each Christmas morning, this was a bad trip. <laughs> No, Christmas, instead of getting there, at, <laughs> thank you very much, instead of getting there at 9.45, we got there at 3 a.m. Instead of flying out of Dubuque, we had to drive to Cedar Rapids. And, of course, then we had to fly back in. Nothing wrong with Cedar Rapids Airport, don't get me wrong. Nobody write me letters about Cedar Rapids Airport. I'm not, I'm telling you, what I'm saying is, oh, I thought it was going to be peaches and cream, man. I, it's all set. I had a great service last Sunday morning, then we're off. Uh uh-uh. uh. And you know, that's kind of just a small picture of how sometimes it is in life. You think you get, man, I'm, I'm going on for a cruise. And all of a sudden the storm comes up and the winds start to blow contrary and the waves. And what's going on? But in the midst of that mess, God will bring peace and speak the word and calm the storm, keep you safe through it. And bring you through to the other side. Can I get an amen? Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness. For his wonderful works to the children of men. How many of, have you, how many of you have ever been brought through a storm like that in your life? Sometime tough and challenging. Man, we can praise the Lord, can't we, for his goodness. And not only that, but we can make available those things. If you have a need in any of those lives, Kelly and Mike. Joy, let's, let's come down here. If you have a need in your life for healing, there's confusion in your life. Or there's a fog that you need lifted. There's something that you need God's help with. Why don't you right now, just get up right from wherever you are. Come on down here and let us pray for you. Hallelujah. Just wherever you are, just pop up right now. Don't wait for a long time. We don't want to take an excessive amount of time any longer than we need to. But we want to take the time to minister to you. Brother, why don't you go right on down there to Mike. And Joy, why don't you go ahead and pray for her. And and David, why don't you come over here to me. And you too, why don't you go to Kelly. Hallelujah. And glory to God. Let's pray. Church, would you stand up and reach your hands out this way? Just to extend your faith this way and your prayers. Hallelujah for these people. Hallelujah. What it is it? Let's have every head bowed, please, every eye closed. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, so that whosoever believes on him will not perish but will have everlasting life. In 1 Timothy, we read, we read that Jesus is the mediator, the only mediator, medi- inter- the only mediator between God and men. Hallelujah. He's the Savior. He's the Lord. He is that fount of blessing where the goodness of God flows out. And if you trust him, if you call on his name as your Lord and Savior, then according to 2 Peter, everything pertaining to life and godliness becomes yours. That God will help you every moment. He'll be there with you every moment of the day. He'll guide you. He'll help you lay aside things that need to go, give you the strength and the desire. And he'll help you pick up the things that need to be picked up. And he'll give you provision Along the way, you'll never be without. You'll have a father's care. And so, if you believe those things, if you believe he died on the, he died for your sins, let me just tell you. He came, the word of God became flesh. It's what we celebrate at Christmas. He lived among us a perfect sinless life. At the age of 33, he gave that life to ransom you and I from the darkness of our life, from the sin in our life and the consequences of that. And three days later was raised from the dead. God made him Lord of heaven and earth. He's coming again one day to rule and to reign on this earth. In the meantime, those that give them, give him their life, gain a whole new life. They gain forgiveness of their sins and a new life within, new power, new purpose. Glory be to God. Now, if you would say, I believe that, Pastor, but I don't know that I have ever 
uh, at one point in my life, I don't know that I have given him my life, that I have made him my Lord or received him as my Savior, however you want to say it. He is Lord. He is the supreme commander and the leader of our life. And if you will call on his name, everything he's done for you will become yours. You'll become a child of God. Your sins will be forgiven. And you'll enter into that new journey with him. In a moment, we're all going to pray in this room. And you can pray with us right where you're standing or seated and receive Jesus Christ as Lord in your life. I'd like to know that I'm praying with you. So if I'm talking to you and you're talking to me, you're saying, Pastor Lauren, when you're, we're praying, you're praying with me. I'm receiving Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. On the count of three, with nobody looking around, would you slip your hand up so I can see it? One, two, three. Thank you. Thank you. Friends, let's pray together. And you watching my Facebook, you can pray right along with us. Let's say it together. Dear God in heaven, thank you for sending Jesus to be my Savior. Right now, I turn from how I've been living, and I receive you, Jesus, as Lord of my life. Thank you for forgiving me and saving me. In your name I pray, amen. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, there is a party going on in heaven. Glory to God, because the whole cycle of love was complete. God loved you so much, he sent Jesus to bring you back to himself. And that love, you've received that gift. And God's so glad. And he's prepared to walk with you into that purpose that he has for you. Man, whether you realize it or not, folks, you, God's got a design for your life from before you were ever here. Man, he's got, got it all planned out, and it is good. Hello, and thank you for joining us this week. If this ministry has been a blessing to you, I'd like you to prayerfully consider partnering with us financially so we can get the Word of God to more and more people. We really do pray that this ministry has been a blessing to you. And if you're in this area, next Sunday at 9 o'clock and 11 o'clock, come on out and join us. If you're not here in the area, then please join us again online next Sunday. Thank you again, and God bless you.